This is Twit. SMS is a very simple protocol that you guys have used probably in the past, you know, sending text messages across. Uh, it's a very simple, simple protocol. It doesn't allow you to do things like read messages or read receipts and other things. But with the likes of Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp and WeChat, adding all these additional features in there, it tends to make look MS, SMS kind of lost in the background. Well, that's where this new rich communications service protocol comes in. It's the industry is trying to replace SMS with RCS. Now, RCS is interesting because it's uh, essentially brought in to uh, make a better type of an evolution of SMS, essentially. It adds features in there for like rich messaging content, uh, integrated features like read receipt directly. Um, just like, you know, in fact, just like video and audio messaging that they had in some of these other devices and other applications. Now, I, I want to throw it over to you guys because I think that let's start with cheaper because I think that SMS obviously is one of those things like, for instance, an, a cell phone service will tell you, hey, you know, in a in a crisis, don't use your cell phone, send a message because it's a small packet of information, kilobytes, maybe and sometimes you know, depending on the size, you only get 160 characters there. It can get it over the wire much easier than making a phone call, much easier than using the Internet and using these messenger services. Is, is RCS going to change that? I mean, it sounds like they're offering more capabilities. It sounds like it's similar to just using an Internet connection. But are there small packets of information that they're compressing? Is this going to cause more issues than it is actually going to fix them? What do you think, Chibur? Uh Yeah, I think so. You know, I actually use SMS a lot. You know, you you can encode data and send an awful lot of useful data in an SMS message. Also, like you said, SMS can get through when voice or data can't. In fact, you know, it's it's the communications method of choice in emergencies. Um. Very cool. Now, I, I put my spin on this is cell carriers want you to buy data. They make a lot of money on data. They don't make as much money on cell calls. They don't make as much money on SMS because that's on the cellular side. Their profits come from the data side. RCS is a data only um, technology. It is basically responding to the market where they want, you know, the Snapchat and, you know, that generation being able to send, you know, multimedia messages to each other. So they're responding to a marketplace. Now, will SMS disappear, which I think is what you're alluding to is I don't think so. I think it's still important. I think there's still a lot of machine to machine um data that's sent over SMS. I certainly use it. Um, it. In fact, I can't afford full data on the um, Iridium side, but I can afford it on the SMS side. So I think that's going to be one of the things that's going to make a change. It's going to be the machine-to-machine -machine side that's going to keep breathing life into SMS, but I think it's the millennial Snapchat generation is going to be driving RCS as a marketing tool. Right. Yeah. I mean, in fact, Emily Strange in the chat room saying, hey, I enjoy my Facebook messenger. messenger. Don't try to get rid of it. But I think it, it, it kind of it, it's changing a protocol. It's changing the definitive default that carriers provide as a messaging protocol. So this is interesting. I want to throw it over to Curtis because I want to know how, how is this going to change in the enterprise? Because once you change the default protocol that things are going on, you could essentially build upon that protocol and maybe even create new industry there. Uh, is this something that you think will you know help the enterprise in some way, because again, they, they require some of these data streams, this information, especially with IOT devices out there today. Um, other things that just need a very definitive data protocol, uh, data related protocols rather than streaming data over the internet or so on. Plus sometimes data connections in the industry are not always the most prominent. You think this will help with that? Um, you know, being able to send just pure data across the wire. Well, on the one hand, it certainly could. On the other hand, I think one of the virtues of most IoT devices is that they are pretty skinny from a, a data transmission point of view. And I think a lot of both the manufacturers and the carriers like that because the last thing we, we really want 
is billions and billions of autonomous devices out there just spewing data willy-nilly. Uh, that's a recipe for raising cell deployment costs. So I think that they're gonna, there's going to be a push to keep industrial stuff and, say, wearables and all of that down at the SMS level because it's, it's in place and it's cheap. What I think we have here is something that could very well be used for richer richer messaging, uh, richer, if you will, asynchronous messaging. Um, what I fear is that this feels a little bit like a step back to the, the, the days of email in the 80s when different systems had different different features and different functions. I mean, if you were on CompuServe versus MCI Mail versus, you know, The Well versus Prodigy versus whatever. Now, there were, were standards that came into place, protocols that came into place that allowed you to send a, a, an email message from one system to another, but you couldn't do it with full features because there were system-specific features. And that's what this feels a bit like, uh, sort of the Android version of um, uh, of Apple's messages. Uh, and that that's fine, but I worry about us once again getting into this somewhat balkanized state. Uh, and that's something that most enterprises hate. I mean, they 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 hate on the one hand supporting multiple uh, platforms at all. But when you all of a sudden get multiple platforms with multiple rich feature sets, uh, it starts being a real nightmare when it comes to, to figuring out which apps you can support, which messaging protocols, all that. So I have a feeling that there are a lot of enterprise people who are looking at this with a lot of skepticism and a lot of worry because what they see is a great deal of integration work coming down the line, and they can be only exci so excited about that. Right, right, right. Well, hopefully it doesn't bring us back to the email of the 80s, but I think it definitely will cause issues and be disruptor in the enterprise, and we'll see what happens as RCS has kind of moved along.